Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. I'm here in far southwest Virginia in the Appalachian Mountains at about 3,000 feet. And I hiked about a mile back through the forest to this fantastic meadow that's isolated here. And it is full of fantastic flowers and so many butterflies. I've been doing a series on the meadow plants. Check out my playlist, if you will, on those. And today I want to cover New York ironweed. I've always called it New York ironweed. There's actually 25 species of ironweed in the United States, and New York ironweed is just one of them. And I want to talk to you about, well, how it got its name, both the common name and the scientific name and talk about what a fantastic native plant this is. And the best part of it is the incredible magenta purple color that I think is unmatched in nature. I am so excited about this plant. I'm thrilled every fall to see it. It's just starting to bloom now. So stay tuned for this episode on ironweed. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. Let's go right off the bat and look at the flowers up close. The colors on these things are absolutely magnificent. I can't get over the deep purple magenta of these flowers, how beautiful they are. They're just incredible flowers to see. And again, would make a fantastic introduction to your native plant garden at home. Here in Virginia, we have five species of ironweed that you might find across the state. New York ironweed occurs in almost every county in the state of Virginia. And it's a funny name for a plant because it's found from Massachusetts to Florida all the way across to the Mississippi. So it's one of the most common of the ironweed. And it's funny, it has this name, New York ironweed. How did it get its name? Well, one of the first naturalists to find it found it first in New York, and that was the first uh, documented sighting by this particular naturalist. And so the name stuck. And a lot of times, if you look at scientific names, many of the names end in Virginiam or Virginius. And that's because they often would put that in for a species name because that's where they first saw it. And of course, our first established colony was in Virginia at Jamestown. So many of our documented reports about plants were first seen and first sighted and first named in the state of Virginia. So the use New York ironweed was simply to denote where it was first seen, and for some reason it's stuck with that common name. In North America, there are over 25 species of ironweed. It's often difficult to identify ironweeds to the uh, species level, because they hybridize easily and some of the distinction points are very, very hard to see. The genus name for the ironweeds is Vernonia, and it was named in honor of William Vernon, who was an English botanist who did a lot of descriptions and documentations of plants he found in the late 1600s. So it's a cool name and it has an interesting history along with it. So how does it get the name ironweed? Well, there's two theories on that. One is that the stem is very, very strong and it's hard to break. And it's very, very hard apparently, and I would never do this, to try to pull it up out of the ground. Its roots are really, really tough. The other reason is that once its flowers are pollinated and it goes to seed, the seeds have a rusty iron kind of color to them. So that was another reason they thought it was named ironweed. The plant itself is very tall. It can reach four, five, maybe even six feet tall. And like Joe Pieweed was probably one of the prairie plants that uh, dominated back in the days of, of prairie grasses, where there's competition for sunlight uh, uh, amongst the tall grasses. It's also interesting because the stem does not branch until it's ready to flower and the little branchlets open up at the very, very top of the uh, plant. So look for a tall, single stem. Being a native plant, this plant, of course, was well known to the indigenous peoples, the Native Americans that were here long before white settlers arrived from Europe. 
The plant occurs in many, many different medicinal recipes that uh, American Indians, the indigenous peoples, used back in the day. It included uses for pain relief, some female issues, especially to relieve childbirth pain or menstrual pain. It was used as a digestive aid. The roots were particularly important in the medicinal concoctions, and a root tea was used to calm digestive issues. I'm a huge advocate of native plantings. They're so important. Ironweed, Joe Pye weed, these late flowering natives are so important to our native species, particularly the monarch butterfly, who needs to nectar on their huge journey south uh, to Mexico and their annual migration, which takes place in the fall. So these are excellent, excellent plants to put into your native uh, gardens, especially in regard to butterflies. They are butterfly magnets. New York ironweed combined with Joe Pye weed might be a fantastic substitution to butterfly bush. Butterfly bush is non-native. It's incredible in drawing butterflies. And if you want to trend more to native plantings, those are two plants you might want to include in your native gardens. Ironweed does prefer wet areas and you can see it very often in cattle fields, in the lowlands, in the uh, wet places, in the wetlands of some cattle fields. The cattle don't seem to like to eat it too much, so it usually stands. And it's also very deer resistant. So I know a lot of people have trouble with their deer in their garden. So this is a deer resistant plant that you can add. Being a native plant, there's a number of different native moss species that have co-evolved with it. And so it's important to, uh, for us to continue to plant native species for our other native insects. And it's so cool seeing all the different butterflies that come to New York ironweed. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode on New York ironweed. If you're interested in these fall flowering plants, please check out my Fall Meadows playlist that will feature many, many of the plants that you see behind me right now. Remember, if you like what I do on this channel, please subscribe, give me a like, and I love hearing from my viewers. Leave me a comment. What are your observations and experiences with fall meadow plants? And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.